Oh, we're just gonna leave people to, to enter. Um, maybe Mr. Stefan can uh, help me uh, to let people in, uh, or I will see here as well. So we're gonna start now. Hello. Uh, I was just reading these articles and some facts about the topic that we're gonna, that we're gonna discuss today that uh, with these two very special guests today, we're gonna talk about it. So all people who author books don't necessarily qualify as entrepreneurs. It really comes down to how much of the business side the author is really involved in. If you self-publish on, for example, Amazon, and did everything related to the business side, it qualifies an inter entrepreneur to plan a manuscript, develop it, write it, edit it, design the book files, create a cover, market your book, publish it, printing, and on and on. The fulfillment. There is a lot that goes into making a book. A strategy is crucial to succeeding. Your book is your product, your innovation. You want to share with the world. Being a successful author is a business. Connecting readers with your content is, very, is, is where the entrepreneurial man, my mindset becomes important. With the marketing strategy, you act more as entrepreneur than as an author. So entrepreneur is a clean combination of both. Successful independent author must closely resemble entrepreneurs in their approach to promote and selling their book. And that's the direction you need to take to find your own success. Good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone joining us here today and welcome to our monthly virtual meeting of Slovenian businesswomen around the globe, a program part of our organization, Slovenian Global Business Network, where we mainly host the Slovenian diaspora women, entrepreneurs, and executives from all over the world. My name is Matej peroshek Chukini. I'm an executive uh, director of our organization and host of this program. The event is recorded as usual and will be av available on, your, on our YouTube channel later on. So today, my two special guests are entrepreneurs, a Slovenian-Belgian awarded writer, and also our colleague, Ms. Carmen Spiliak, with BA in political science and PhD in anthropology of gender. She's born in Slovenia, a small town called Jalec, the land of beer and hummus, and hops, excuse me, and famous for their fountain position in the town park from which beer comes out instead of water. She also lived in Berlin, uh, Brussels, and currently she lives in Sao Paulo in Brazil, where she writes full time. And Ms. Petra Skaria, author of five bestsellers and founder of Pitka Awarded Publishing House in Slovenia. Also born in town called Seonica, known as a birthplace of former lady, the first lady of USA, Melania Trump. <laughs> Today's topic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will be on bringing entrepreneurship into writing. It's a very important topic and it's a very, very profound. So we can go hours and hours, but we'll try to squeeze it maybe an hour and a half. From stereotype writing to how to survive and thrive as a writer, today's no longer enough to write a book. And, it's, and it is and your star engagement and entrepreneurship is expected. The economic framework that supports artists is important as the art itself. You remove one from other, then things will fall apart. Simultaneously encourage entrepreneurship and creativity. Carmen and Petra has many things in common. Not only they both come from small towns with only 5,000 inhabitants. They both come from working class fam families with no entrepreneurial backgrounds. And at very young age, they both dive into self-made entrepreneurship. And most importantly, 
They share the same passion for writing. They both want to build a business from hobby to be able to make a living from it. You can interact with our guests today. So get your questions ready for the debate on the end. So first we're gonna start with dear Petra and just wanted to emphasize that her motto is be what you are, do what makes you happy. Petra, please explain us a little bit uh, from your path, from traveling the world, gaining experience and returning back to Slovenia. Why? Why staying in Slovenia is so important? Okay, first, hello to everyone and thank you to, uh, to join us. Matej and Carmen, I, I will ask you very much if I will struggle with English a little bit, so to help me. And but sorry, Matej, I have to correct you at the beginning. Yes. I'm not from a town for, uh, uh, which has 5,000 people. I'm from a small village with 20 houses and 25 barns. So, <laughs> Sevica for me is like a New York. Okay. So, <laughs> so <it's> <laughs> I'm from nowhere in Slovenia, but I, I love it so much. Uh, um, I grew up in a big farm, actually, and that's amazing for a kid, but a um, small kid doesn't realize it. And because we had a TV, we had a TV, I saw that the best place you can live is, of course, California, Los Angeles. Uh, and the first time I had the chance, I took a flight and I went there. I want to live there because it's everything beautiful there. No farm, just glamorous and successful and all oh, perfect. Uh, so I started to travel because I saw that California, that's not what I expected. And then I went uh, you know, north, south, east, west, everywhere, 10 years I had 10 years of traveling around the world. I came back to earn a bit of money and then I travel again and back to earn money and so on and so on. That's why I had to be an entrepreneur because no one would take me in, on a job. Can you imagine you're here for three months and then there's no Petra for two months again and so on and so on. Um, why Slovenia? It's hard to explain it, but I'm so in love in Slovenia. Maybe that's even too much, but I really love our country. I love our food. You, you know, you have a food from your mom, from a, a farm. It's so tasty. It's so good. I love people. I think that people in Slovenia, okay, we are a bit close and close-minded, but still they are with a big heart and loving and they, they love to help. They come together. We are so small that we learn how to, you know, do stuff together. And I like that. Uh, and of course, uh, have you ever been in Slovenia? If you've been here, you know how amazing nature we have. We have clean water everywhere. I mean, it's perfect to live in. It's harder to do business, I could say, um, but it's perfect to live. If you love nature, if you love honesty, and if you love everything uh, more boutique, you will love being in Slovenia. Mateo, we don't hear no, you, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you for, uh, so yeah, you, you're right, I agree. It's a beautiful for me, even though it's only 2 million people, but for me, it's a big country because it's it has a big heart, has a big everything. So for us, though it's small, it's big in every meaning. Uh, so you started entrepreneurship at age 19. Yes, and today you are 70% more or less businesswoman and 30% writer. So, <laughs> and also why writing in Slovenia? Mm, okay, I started uh, entrepreneurship when I was 19, but not because I wanted to, but my parents are not rich. So they said, if you want to uh, study in Ljubljana, Ljubljana is the capital, capital and for us, it was very expensive to live here. Uh, so they said, if you want to study, you have to work to, to get money to study. And you know this balloon system? How do you say in English? Bolognian, balloon, balloon system, something? Balloon. You have to be there. You can't, you know, work and study. You have to be there all the time. So the only way was to be entrepreneur and do 
stuff on weekends and so on. So I was pushed into entrepreneurship. Then I saw that I actually love it. It's like a game. You know, if you ever train a volleyball, I trained a volleyball for many years. The entrepreneurship is very similar to learning how to uh, enjoy the game of volleyball. You need to know the rules. You start with knowing the rules. Then you start to play. You need a, a good team of people. Not the, um, the same people, but you know different positions to have a strong team. Uh, then you have to learn basics and then you start to love it. And more you know how to play volleyball, more, more you love it. It's the same entrepreneurship for me. And why writing? To be honest, I ask myself, what do I know how to do? What I'm good at? And I realized that not very much. I, I know how to write, okay? I always write, you know, big stories for, uh, you know, you, <laughs> they always hire me <laughs> on, uh, in our village to write, um, how to say it, on a funeral, funeral, you have this speech. Yeah. You know, the whole village and town, they ask Petra, let's write something to be emotional and good. And I said, okay, probably I know how to write. Is it possible to write? And I love writing. I love books. I totally adore books. Is it possible to live just by, I don't know, writing or do something with books? And then I, you know, if you ask the right question, you get the answer. If you want to do something, you will find the way. I'm not the uh, average writer. I'm not the average publishing house. I put a lot of entrepreneurship into it. And entrepreneurship, I think it's being innovative, being creative. You find solutions, you see the gap in your environment. Uh, where's the opportunity to do something? And that's how I could, I could live with writing and publishing uh, books quite good in a small country like Slovenia. But I do really, really much different than classical uh, publishing houses. You also encourage entrepreneurships now, uh, believing that in the long run, the state would prosper the most by making people more enterprising in general, and understanding the basics of economics and economics and understand how company works and be more creative and proactive. So you're very active in this uh, incubator, Catapult, uh, where you maybe a little bit around this project, uh, Mosaic, uh, Mosaic, I'm sorry, also my language some, sometimes fails, Mosaic of uh, Entrepreneurship. Yeah, there's a big problem if you travel a lot. And the problem is that you see what's there around the world. When you live just in Slovenia, you think that's it. I'm the best in the village, that's it. But then you travel and you see, oh my God, there's so, so, so small village, this Slovenia. And we are so close-minded and that there's not just one way how to live your life. Come on, you see in Myanmar, you see in Nepal, you see in Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, everywhere. And then you ask yourself, oh, is there anything else than the way we live here in Slovenia? And then I came back and I look around and I saw so many talents. In Slovenia, we have such an amazing talents and extremely, extremely intelligent young people with, with great ideas, but they do nothing with it. Why? Because they are, um, they, they are learned that you have to get a steady job in, of course, some government job, and that's it. That's the best you can do in, in your life. But isn't the nicest thing that you find something that you really, really love? like I love writing and you you do a business with it okay you can do uh, inside the small company inside the company or you do your own company for example what I wanted to do there's no such place here in Slovenia so I made the place for me to do what I do and I said we, we would have such a happy uh, country so many happy um, intelligent young people if they would have more entrepreneurial mindset you know, just to know the basics, like you learn the basics of volleyball playing, just learn the basics of, of entrepreneurship. Maybe you'll have your own company or you will work inside the company. But you, if you know the basics, how, um, you know, what is cash flow, what is, um, I don't know, the English expression of all this business stuff, but you need to learn it 
to understand your company, to understand what you put inside the company, to find the solutions, to find your way that you will really in, in, enjoy in your uh, in work that you do. And if you do it, you will do the amazing stuff. Definitely, you'll have you'll do amazing stuff. So I believe that in the long term, uh, Slovenia desperately needs supporting of um, how to say it, to to uh, to be more entrepreneurial like, not more entrepreneurs, but more entrepreneurial like, because we have all the stuff we need to be a prosperous country. We have everything, but we still think my generation and younger still think it's just as a workers and that's it. That's all they can do in their lives. For example, um, among writers here in Slovenia and among publishing houses, to be honest, they don't like me really. They really don't like me. They actually do a really uh, bad marketing um, publicly because they say publicly that putting in entrepreneurship into writing, into an art, it's something that is so terribly wrong. They said, if you're an artist, you shouldn't think entrepreneurial. You shouldn't think uh, through numbers. You should be just an artist. And that's something they adore. If you're an entrepreneur in Slovenia, it's like, okay, you're an entrepreneur. So you are bad at school or you're a really bad person. That's why you're an entrepreneur. And that's not good for a country. Just from economical view, just from uh, statistic and mathematics, that's not good for a country, really not. So maybe they just like um, the way you work, right? But you prove them wrong because just by statistic, by the numbers, uh, in Slovenia, about 6,000 new titles are published annually, right? And it's the first actually in Europe in terms of the numbers uh, of books published per capita. And on average, only 350 copies only are sold in Slovenia. But where you prove them wrong is how many books you're selling, amazing. Like most of your books are sold in at least 5,000 copies. Where like in average in Slovenia, it's about 350. Yes, and you see, that's the point where artists would say that's wrong. It's wrong to uh, sell your book. It's wrong to promote yourself. The book, if it's good, it should sell itself. I don't believe it, but that's what they think. And they would say, because I tell those numbers, of course, I tell all the numbers, they say, that's really bad. You're destroying books and art. And uh, th that's the problem. For example, if I would say that in uh, California, they, they would think about it totally different. That's why, I, because I love Slovenia, I want to stay here. I want to do, uh, I want to help to make an environment that is it's supportive for people who want to be more entrepreneurial like. Why not just enjoy your, you know, the way you do and you have to be entrepreneurial to do that. Okay, so yeah, uh, about the numbers, I'm, I'm very proud because I, they all say it's, it's, not, it's not possible in Slovenia to live just by writing and uh, publishing house because yeah, average sale is 350 copies. I think now with Corona is even less than that. Uh, that's nothing but I think it's not I, I to be honest I don't have the best books not yet maybe when I will be 50 or 60 but I don't have the best books to be honest but I show them I do the marketing I you know I, I'm an entrepreneur and it's easy to sell 5,000 book, um, books in Slovenia or one this small one we sold even of course it's a good Topic. It's American millionaires have spoken. Uh, I, think, I think it was 16,000 copies. And yeah. it's not so hard. I'm not the best selling person, but I am a bit entrepreneurial. You're learning. So you're learning how to, how to become an entrepreneur, huh? to, to sell your books. But sure. this book that you just mentioned, uh, maybe something that you said, it's so beautiful, that there are stories that deserve to live forever. So actually Petra gives them the immortality by simply writing them. And uh, the, like by numbers, the most successful was this one, American Millionaires Have Spoken that was sold in 16,000 copies. 
and was also translated in Russian, English, and Croatian language. And you sold the copyrights of this book to China. True. If so you ask me how, I have no idea. It's, it was pure luck. I was just, okay. Um, uh, okay. My strong point as an author is that many authors are like quiet mouses inside somewhere, uh, not able to promote themselves and so on and so on. But I'm really good when you put me uh, live in a on a stage. I, and I know that's my strong point. So I try to go on a stage and then I can sell books. Uh, so once I was, um, I was having a seminar for a company. I never heard about the company. It was a big seminar. At the end, uh, someone came to me and he said, I'm Dan Anderson from Great Britain. Hi, hi. I have a business proposition for you, okay? Would you, uh, would you lecture for us in Shanghai? Well, if I have to, okay, <laughs> of course I will. It's amazing. And he said, if you will lecture there, it, was, it will be the big event on the national TV with 3,000 people. It would be good if we translate the book into Chinese language. Uh, and he thought about it and he said, you know what? I would buy the, we would buy as a company the, those uh, copyrights of this book for whole China, for whole China. And I said, okay, why not? To be honest, I was so happy. That was the biggest joy of my life, my business life. That yeah, it was pure luck. I I have no idea how to sell copyrights on China. That was a big accomplishment. And um, the book that it's more closer to your heart, uh, Camino, uh, subtitled "From Slavery to Freedom." It's like more your personal success, right? And that has touched and change people's lives and was also sold in so far 6,000 copies. So maybe yeah. a little bit about this story or about the book. Okay, uh, one step back. You have books that are just uh, putting your knowledge inside the book and uh, you know the knowledge has to stay somewhere. The book is great way how to do it. And then you have books that is uh, th that are um, emotional, that uh, touches you very deeply emotionally. And I have one of the kind, the kind of book, and that's the one, Camino, From Slavery to Freedom. Do you know the Camino? Camino way, that's the Camino, Spanish. Pellegrini. Yeah. Yeah. Spanish way, well, when you walk a thousand kilometers and you do nothing, you just walk for a thousand Kilometers. It's a lot <laughs> walking. <laughs> yeah, but you have nothing else to do for one month. So, yeah. what to do? Okay, I would walk a bit more. What to do else? Uh, no. So, this book, uh, you know, this book is strong in Slovenia because of the Slovenian closed mindset. In Slovenia, it's still, uh, we have still a lot of taboo topics. For example, you don't talk about this, you don't talk about that. That's something that should stay inside the house. Uh, how do you say in English? Uh, behind the walls. Behind, behind the, the walls. Behind the walls, yeah. Behind, behind the walls, walls yeah. <laughs> and we're still very strong in this uh, Christianity. And I was born and raised as a, you know, mostly in, in the church. And uh, in my uh, family and around, it was normal that you don't talk stuff. You, you're quiet. There's something wrong, be quiet. And I had a strong um, um, strong story from my childhood. I was living with uh, in a big house with our uh, uncle that is mentally ill. You know? So physically is okay, but mentally ill. Uh, he, he can't think, so totally mentally ill from a birth. And we were born and we were raised together we were playing together but he is 15 years older than me and when we're, i was young from four to i think till seven or eight years old uh he was actually abusing me all the time it was like a game because he has normal physical needs and he can't think but no one knows about it and i had strong um to Strong consequences. consequences, consequences because of it in my life. And I was struggling a lot. The, 
that's also why I traveled. I, I tried to go for away from it, mm -hmm. something away from, from myself. Yeah. And I was struggling for 15 years with uh, psychotherapists, with struggling with everything, with books, with self-help, with hypnosis and so on and so on. Uh, and the Camino was the part of it, to, of my healing of it. Then I put in this book, it, it's like I'm walking the Camino, but after five, seven, eight uh, days of walking, in the book, I tell why I walk, why I went uh, there. And I tell in the book about this, uh, about my story. It's totally taboo in Slovenia. You don't talk about it because in Slovenia, the one that was abused is the ugly one. Be quiet, uh, especially if you're a woman. But I put it out, I, I believe, believe because of the traveling, because I saw in the world, that's not a taboo, that's normal. Come on, in Slovenia, we're close-minded. That's not something that you should put inside. And when I put this book out, of course, my family is now split in two ways. The, the one way doesn't like me totally, no way. We don't know each other anymore. It was a big shock for everyone here around. But now it's three, four years uh, since I published the book. Every week I had, I get at least one email from people who are crying, who are telling the same stories, who are not able to tell the stories because they're afraid what will people say about it. And they're start, starting to talk about it. They're starting to heal themselves. They're, even they are trying to change the, um, the law because we don't have a um, law what to do if the sexual abuse was done from a mentally ill person that is um, older. So the book really made an impact here uh, in Slovenia. I think it was the right timing, the right topic. People started to oh, talk about it and started their own healing. And I think that's the strong uh, point that you can get uh, being a writer. You, you, you have to be uh, careful because whatever you put out, um, you have the influence. But the influence could be good or bad. So. Don't just write something to put out. Think about it, what you're putting out. If you want to just write for yourself, write your diary, not the book, because you are influencing people from that, and that's the responsibility. But it's, uh, thank God, eh, that you can express your feelings and express it and, and send it publicly. Thank God that you can share the story, any story, yeah. and that it's... Uh, that people, that it gets to people's hands, that people can identify with it. So you suffer, but you know, suffer alone. So this is very important, actually. It's a very sad story, but I know that- No, it's a happy story. No, but it's like, it's, no, it's a sad situation that happened, but, it, but you grew up, you grew up into more, I think people with experience like this, they grew up stronger, they grew up fighters. So they can achieve, much more or yeah comparing to someone that was actually given everything in life you know but um, I think I think you appreciate small stuff for example exactly. just feeling stuff for me that's oh, precious because I couldn't feel in my body stuff exactly. and ah oh, you, you really appreciate stuff and yeah, that's really. why it's a happy story <laughs> good I, I'm really happy to get a copy and I want to read it want to bring it over to Brazil Thank you. Brazil, actually so and but, by the uh, way yeah, Matea, yeah if I may you mentioned that uh, that was the um that was even strong point why I made the publishing house and we have the motto of publishing house that is there are stories they uh, that should live forever is a good translation. Yeah, yeah. The 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 stories that deserve that, that they deserve to live forever, yeah. and that you gave them the immortality by simply writing them. Yeah. yeah, because I realized that in Slovenia we have many strong, amazing stories, many amazing authors, but they have no chance to put the book inside oh. on small, mm -hmm. so small market, and many people okay. don't have money to do it. And yeah. why not to help them? That's why we have a publishing house just for Slovenian authors with strong stories. Let's support that. As I said, I love Slovenia. 
And you, you founded this publishing house, uh, founded in 2019 uh, with, within the company Catapult, and for which you have received the gold uh, awards uh, and also silver awards for, uh, from Chamber of Commerce in Slovenia for the innovation uh, in national and domestic level. Uh, why, build, why you build your own house, uh, publishing house? Why? Why you um, did this change from? Uh, yeah, to start, in Slovenia, we have 1,400 publishing houses. It's total nonsense in a small, small, small market to do 1,400 first publishing house. But here's the entrepreneurial thinking that I was uh, thinking, okay, publishing houses are going down. Uh, books are going down, but people, we do read books. We do write books. There's something wrong in this mathematics that, that it's not coming together. Okay. Then I think, okay, what would I love to, to have? What kind of support would I uh, wanted to have from a publishing house for me as an author? And I ask publishing houses around, would you do that for me? Would you do this for me? You know, in Slovenia, uh, I don't know the foreign countries, but in Slovenia, if the publishing house publish your book, they'll give you six till 10% from a book and they sell 300 copies. So you can imagine that you get nothing. But I tell them, you know what? I market, uh, I sell a lot of books. Just help me with administration, with distribution, with everything I need to support me as an author that, uh, that I could write more. And all the publishing houses said, no, that's our model and that's it. And then one extremely smart guy, Jurek um, Nes from Trbolia. From it is Trbolia. Uh, here with us, uh, joining us as well today. Oh my God, no, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh no, I was just about to talk about the book with him. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Matej. <laughs> if so. he just entered the, the perfect timing, I think. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. we really want to listen about this book, uh, Acrobats. Uh, okay, about okay. This this, about the Slovenian <laughs> leader company, Devesat, uh, that no. works with data, data, data <laughs> measurement, <laughs> storing okay. and visualization in data analysis. So it's it's a very strong company that it's maybe okay. 16 companies around the world. And um, so please. Uh, 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 thank you, Jure. Now show yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he is. <laughs> That's even better. Hi, hi. I can, I can leave. I can leave. So no, you have don't fun. leave now. <laughs> There's no way back. There's no <laughs> way back. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Knees. <laughs> okay, to make the story <laughs> further, um, Jure Knees is also the founder of Catapult, as we mentioned, and also co-founder of the Devisoft. And he, uh, I told him the story, uh, what, is, uh, what is the problem in this publishing uh, uh, houses and me as a writer. And he said, why not to make your own publishing house on a way that you would love it as an author? Mm -hmm. And I said, why not? So we made the publishing house that is um, totally different than classical publishing houses in Slovenia. So we didn't make the 1,400 first publishing house in Slovenia, but he said, you just said, you know what? Your goal could be that you are uh, the, oh, how was it? The best publishing house with this kind of model. And I said, that's it, we made it. We are the best one because we are the only one. So we made a total special publishing house that, um, you know, the, the basic rule is, uh, how to explain, uh, the classical publishing houses are, we will make your book and we will give you six till 10% as an author. And that's it. You have no authorities as an author. But uh, our publishing house, Petka, it's like, we will put the half investment in the book and you as an author, give the, the other half. So we are together in good and bad. So if, if we make um, profit, it's split 50-50. If we make loss, it's split 50-50. And then we also um, encourage author to uh, marketing to sell their book because if he sell his book, he'll get 75%. If we sell the book, we'll get 60%. So it's like, we are all motivated to sell to market the book. And so far, I think it's, doing quite well. Good, and uh, the, just a little bit about, uh, you have mentioned the mosaic 
uh, a little bit of this uh, heart uh, building, how you, you do together as well in Catapult. Okay, that's the part of, uh, we said that we support entrepreneurial way of thinking among people here in Slovenia. And uh, the problem is that we have a lot of seminars and educational programs, a lot in Slovenia, a lot of support. But to be honest, it's too many of it. And at the end, if you are starting your own business, you have no idea what is important, what is not important. So many informations that you would say, oh, that's too much, I want to do it. So we are trying to support entrepreneurial way of thinking, but we are actually killing it by doing to, 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 to uh, how to say, to hard. It's challenging, uh, so, no? Yeah, yeah it's challenging. So uh, also with you, Reknes, we were talking about what are important thing, things that you have to learn and you have to decide when you start your own business. There are not many things when you start. As I compared with the volleyball, at the start, you don't need to know everything. Just start with the basics at the beginning. You need to know why you do it, how to do it, what's the mathematics behind it, and that's it. And to do the business model. And then the, um, when you start it, then you need to learn how to do the, uh, the team, the, and so on, so on, so on. And um, with Yure, we put together this mosaic of entrepreneurship that is built with five topics. And when you start your own company, you start with first. And it's really basic from uh, practice, what you have to learn, what you, you have to do, that you start your business. And then you come to second, third, so on, so on, so on. And we try to combine everything in Slovenia, all this supporting um, environment. Uh, we try to connect, in, to connect them and make one basic grounds of education for entrepreneurs, for young entrepreneurs. Exactly, like spreading entrepreneurship among young people, right? Sure. It's important uh, to start uh, investing in young people because their mindset is still a little bit different. They're still uh, browsing around. So you have to bring them back and try to get uh, prepared them for life. Now well, they time. are really smart. They have amazing yeah. ideas. It's just that we are not learning entrepreneurship in schools. Yeah. We are to learn it. If you don't have parents, if you then don't have your uncle entrepreneur, we're to learn it. So we're trying Mentor. to- uh, Mentorships, no? Yeah, but really from, you know, not from academic view, but from practical view. Just do this and that and that and start. And we try to make it more as a game, as a fun, as I said at the beginning, as a volleyball. Um, but if you want to play on the best teams, then it's a lot of hard work and a lot of trainings. That's also what we tell them. So Petra, where we can find your work? Are you selling your books on Amazon or just a bit publishing house? Where we can find your work? My own um, website, petraskaria.com, publishing house, zalosbapetka.com. Uh, I have just this one on Amazon, but that's one, not, it's not the best. <laughs> So uh, just maybe to finish um, our chat here with you, uh, the side project that you did, uh, 500 Female Entrepreneurs, which was also attended by the president of Slovenia, Mr. Bord Pachon. Maybe just uh, briefly explain us this project that you were doing. Um, okay, being short, there were just three girls. Uh, we just saw that there's, um, there's a chance that we can make a big event of women entrepreneurs. We just tested what's best, uh, what kind of events are in and eight years, I think it's eight years ago, we started with the seminar that we just put just for women. It was the right timing, the right topic. And we made the biggest event for women entrepreneurship in Slovenia. It was, uh, it was quite, it was nice. We didn't know that it will grow so big and that we will make a company from it. It just happened. I mean, it's, it wasn't so predict, <laughs> it just happened. About the um, president of our country, Borut Pahar attended. Just uh, don't tell that around the world, but, but to be honest, in Slovenia, 
it's extremely easy to get your president to come on your event. We just have to send one email. And he said, okay, and that was it. So in Slovenia, you know, village of 10, 2 million people, it's so easy to get a president. It's um, probably in your countries, you would say, oh my God, he was the president of the country on the event. That's so important event. Well, it's not so hard to get him. It's very available, no? Yeah. You know, especially to young, to young uh, he's supporting a lot to young uh, programs. And, and I think we have a good president. I really think we have a good president. He's, he but loves politics, to come and... Politics aside now. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he, 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 he's supportive. He, he helped us with the events. We were so nervous. He said, okay, girls, it will be okay. No worries. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good man. Thank you, Petra. So uh, we're just gonna leave. Uh, if you have any questions, every uh, people here um, joining us, uh, we will just keep it for the end, so that we can give uh, the order order plateau to our colleague Carmen now. So thank you, Petra, one more time, and big success for you. And hopefully, we meet in person uh, soon. Um, yeah, welcome, Matea. As I said, welcome to Catapult. I will make you a coffee. Really welcome. Perfect. And mom will to, be very happy. We go to Terbole. Um Carmen Spiliak, uh, our colleague also in our uh, organization, she's been helping us a lot. Um, her motto, the world belongs to those who tell the best stories. So her career actually always revolved around writing. Uh, with a passion for stories that say something about the world. Her short stories, uh, an article has been published in different languages, including Slovenia. Um, Carmen, why you see the best opportunity in becoming an entrepreneur as well? Um, yeah, I, I was making a bit of notes when uh, Petra was talking, so I might refer to some things she said. Um, I My path to entrepreneurship was a bit longer than hers, uh, but I'm happy I got there. Um, I did not always think uh, writing or being a writer is a job, can be a job. As you know, when we were taught uh, in school about language, uh, most writers we read about were, you know, poor men who died of tuberculosis and drank themselves to death. And I mean, wrote beautiful, sad stories, but I could not uh, relate to any of them. So I just simply did not consider myself, you know, being a writer as something uh, I could live from. Um, I've wrote most of my life. I've wrote, I started at a very young age. I think I was seven or eight maybe when I started writing stories and they were published um, by teachers who would send them around, but still I never, at no point I thought that's something I could live from. Um, then, I mean, through, uh, you know, life takes you to other ways. I, I studied, I, you know, did, as Petra said, we have a specific, um, so to say, uh, scheduled way on uh, what is expected of you in terms of um, growing into adult, which is get a job and so on, um, which I did and I, I kept on writing. So my job, I, I as well as her was uh, started entrepreneurship more out of being pushed into it. As you mm -hmm. know, at certain time, um, you know, the being self-employed was very promoted in Slovenia. Also, it was very, let's be honest, lucrative for companies because they didn't have to pay uh, your insurance. So at some point I, said, okay, you know, like none of these uh, real jobs work for me. Um, and at that point, I still absolutely did not know that I was an artist. Um, I just knew I was not happy in nine to five jobs. They were like somehow limiting. So I went freelance because I thought this type of work uh, is more suited to my needs. I can be very efficient with my time so I can work fewer hours a day and then have free time to do other stuff. Um, so I, I st also the appeal or additional appeal of being an entrepreneur or self-employed was that I could travel. Um, and because I was so much in a hurry to get to like what they call a real job and, you know, finish education and stuff, I didn't travel much uh, until later on. 
and I have what um, I would call itchy feet. I really want to meet, uh, you know, see the world, get to know cultures, uh, learn languages. So once I realized I could be self-employed and move to other countries, I did that. Uh, but still, I did not really embrace the entrepreneurship as a um, spirit. For me, this was a means to an end. You know, it was like you are self-employed uh, so that they can pay you through it. I didn't think self-employed is not necessarily being an opportunity. And I think this has a lot to do with exactly what Petra said, the mindset or the type of, let's say, um, negative connotation that podietnistvo entrepreneurship has in Slovenia uh, because it's a lot promoted about uh, people consider entrepreneurship something that is about making money um, and of course uh, making money is bad because then you're greedy but in fact I came from you know this mindset this is bad you should mm. not to actually uh, entrepreneurship is not about making money it's basically about being able to do something you love and earn money from it and I think that's a massive mind shift to make and it took me very long time to make it um, and basically once I did um, I realized there's really a, you know the entrepreneurship can give me something that uh, normal jobs um, cannot which is a freedom and flexibility to be able to live wherever I want to be able to do whatever I want but of course it also means I need to invest some of my own time into making this business sustainable um, uh, another thing with the, with the book so I have tried in uh, I've my first book I wrote which is a perfect flaw uh, is now in English uh, I wrote it originally in Slovenian um, I tried to get it published in Slovenian um, because I had, let's say, a moderate success as a writer in Slovenia. You know, my things were published and so on. I, I sold a screenplay. Um, I've taken a, a screenplay writing uh, course by one of my favorite writers, Miha Mazzini. He is really an excellent mentor. And that was the first time I started considering, wow, writing is something serious. So I wrote this book, I offered it, I very quickly learned that it's a very, so to say, claustrophobic space in publishing, something uh, Petra already said, you know, it's very small, it's very limited, I didn't feel it's the right part for me. So I had this book translated and uh, I published it on my own, um, which I again did more as because I thought this was the best uh, opportunity for me at the time. Um, and because of all the costs involved, because, you know, you need to write the book, you need to have it uh, first edited in Slovenian, then translated. This is quite a lot of money. I've decided at that point that for me, the best uh, marketing decision or sort to say business decision was to switch to English. I absolutely adore Slovenian language. I think it's uh, one of the most beautiful languages. It's also very hard to learn, which makes it perfect for gossiping. <laughs> um, so I, I still struggle finding words in English uh, that exist in Slovenian and are very, you know, impossible to find in English. So I think that's one of the shortcomings. On the other hand, I need to be more creative because of that. So I switched the language and I started writing in English. Uh, and between when I've published this book in English and now I've actually come to uh, learn really a lot about publishing as an industry. Uh, and I can only applaud uh, Petra's, uh, you know, early insights and decision of basically going where now most of the publishing industry is moving. It's a very rigid industry in traditional sense. And of course, it brings you a lot of uh, critical acclaim and recognition. But it's also very limiting and very few authors can live from that. So basically what she did was what is, uh, you know, happening also on the global scale. So I think it was a very big foresight. And I've come to analyze it. I've decided that actually um, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I will still, uh, my sort of say plan is to be a, what they call a hybrid author, which means I am as well traditionally published as well as self-published. But I absolutely love the idea of being able to uh, be involved in each part of the process, um, partly control it, of course, but also learn from it. And I think this is for me the biggest added value that you have direct uh, access and contact with your readers, uh, which you don't always necessarily have. 
um, and you know, you know what works, what doesn't. And I personally don't see it as uh, selling, uh, you know, like being the uh, door to door salesman, a saleswoman selling my book. I see it uh, as I, I'm writing stories that some people like to read. Um, it's a niche market. Uh, I think in Slovenia, it would probably not be a bestseller uh, because I tend to write um, suspense fiction a bit darker fiction sometimes also science fiction uh and there but there are people who love this kind of story so what i'm doing is i am giving them the type of stories that don't exist yet and so it's in a way meeting a need that is there and also making myself happy because i can write the type of stories i want to write sorry this was a bit of a long uh oh, no. answer, but uh that's pretty much it but Carmen, do you think making living as a fiction writer is something promising, like you can succeed writing fiction? Uh, absolutely. Um, you can. You can succeed also as writing fiction as a, a traditionally published author, but you need to be in a way very lucky. Um, this space uh, that we call publishing has changed a lot since I think 2007 when Kindle went uh, first, um, you know, when Kindle first appeared. And key, basically electronic publishing has massively changed the industry and had to, the traditional industry had to adapt because it's like, you know, uh, it's very solid, like an elephant, but it also moves very slowly because of that. So um, definitely there is a chance in terms of, because I am now kind of marketing or targeting English speaking markets, Okay. Um, you can get an agent, uh, and if you do get an agent, this is like a middleman, they take care of your rights and everything, and they try to sell your book, uh, and they try to get you, and of course them, uh, the most uh, money they can or you know, with this. Uh, but you know, you lose, of course, some of the rights when you get traditionally published. So there are people who live from fiction, um, but they are also under quite a lot of stress. They need to produce a book a year. That's a usual contract. And as, as any artist will know, you cannot always force a story out within a year. Sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. Um, there are also self-published authors. And since I have started, let's say, learning a bit more about self-publishing, uh, from mostly uh, Joanna Penn, she's a self-published author, very successful one, and from the Alliance of Independent Authors, of which I'm also now a member, uh, I have learned that this is actually, that they earn much better uh, money than uh, traditionally published, mostly because it's up to them, they can publish uh, in their own tempo so usually also if you write a series of books um which i've only started now so you have a series of let's say a crime fiction where you have the same protagonist um that uh, you follow through different stories uh that's a massive source of income for writers and of course you need to have at least three of these books before it starts paying off so it's not that with one book you earn a lot of money but the more you have, the more people basically have to choose from. Um, so the more books you self-publish, basically the better your income. So you need some time investment at the beginning, but with fiction, you can absolutely earn money. And, and you you earn, uh, you were awarded um, in, in her, the English short fiction has been awarded in anthologist uh, in UK's writing magazine, right? Yeah, so I, I entered, I thought my best chance to uh, get attention from agents and publishers was to get some uh, recognition. And it's not easy when you write in English, in, which not your mother tongue. Um, but I have won a dystopian short story context, contest, and this is one of, this is my favorite magazine. So it was like a additional, let's say, uh, plus for me uh, to see my story published there. Um, and uh, I've, I've wrote a, a thriller that I was pitching and it also now got shortlisted. So I was really, really happy to get, sort to say confirmation that also what I love to write has, a, you know, a market there. Exactly. And, and also short, the I will I will share a link, but otherwise you can find it also on my website. It's uh, I think I have it in one of the blog posts. And uh, you're still unpub yet unpublished thriller. No such a thing as goodbye has been shortlisted for the Black Spring Crime Fiction Prize 2020. 
Yes, so I, I'm really absolutely thrilled about that. Uh, no pun intended. Um, I've sent it last year, kind of forgot about it because I've entered many competitions. Uh, so it's not the, the competition is not yet finished. Uh, but I think even in any case, this is for me quite a, a nice pat in the back. And I'm absolutely happy because it's a, a story that I have pitched to publishers and agents and it got rejected. Uh, we have to get used to rejection. Uh, it does not necessarily mean your writing is bad. Sometimes there's just not space for you or they have somebody like you. It can be many reasons. Uh, but of course, it's very good to find a publisher like them to who are quite established publisher to kind of say, we think this book is good, you know, we think it would sell good, uh, sell well. So I think that means a lot to me. And uh, now you're working with your collection of culinary noir that's going to be published uh, end of the year, right? Uh, yeah, so this is this is the part of being entrepreneur that I really love because uh, this short story collection uh, and I'm going to share a link because I have it I have I'm not advertising it yet because it needs I want to offer it on all the platforms in all the formats so not just Kindle but also Apple books everything paperback and ebook but I was able to already do pre-orders for Kindle uh, so I'm going to share a link just for you to see and I think you will understand why this is a non-classic sort to say uh, book or collection uh, it is called add cyanide to taste and it is a collection of short stories from different genres, from thrillers, suspense, speculative fiction, who all have in common one element, which is food. And I think you will all agree that Slovenians have great food and we love to enjoy our food. And this is something I carry along to my stories. And I loved this idea and I joined it basically often when I would read something, I would wonder when they would, uh, characters would, you know, describe certain food, I would wonder how it tastes like and if I can make it. And in this uh, short story collection, I have paired every, almost every story with a recipe. Uh, none contain cyanide, so you can rest reassured, uh, they're all perfectly safe. Um, but many of them are Slovenian dishes or dishes that my mom liked to make or some dishes that I've created for this collection. Um, and in traditional sense, it would be very hard to find a publisher for this book because A, I am not, uh, you know, an established author. B, it's a short story collection which supposedly are very hard to pitch. There are not so many people who want to publish them. Um, so, and I loved this idea, so I wanted to do it and I uh, wanted to do it myself. And even though I've just put it up yesterday or I think a day before, I already have one pre-order, which means that there is for sure a market for it. You can uh, connect with uh, Pit Kazalozhva Publishing House. I will definitely do so now <laughs> that I know uh, it yeah. exists. Uh, so that that's definitely, I'm already looking forward to uh, coffee with Petra, uh, having coffee with Petra when I am uh, in Slovenia this year. But just uh, uh, when I go a little bit different direction right now. So they say that uh, within 25 years, the digital revolution will bring about the end of paper book. Um, but more importantly, will ebooks and e publishing mean the end of the writer or as a profession? And what do you think will writers be able to make a living and continue writing in the digital era? I, I certainly think yes. If anything, from what I've seen and heard and read about the trends in publishing, digital is good for writers. It's especially good for indie writers, which means independent self-published. For one reason, as you probably have seen, the big publishing houses are joining. Uh, Simon & Schuster, Random uh, Penguin, Random House are now together. So there is less space, which means the bigger they get, um, you know, the tougher will be for authors to, um, uh, negotiate their contracts. Uh, and you have a lot of smaller publishers, which are great, but it's hard to compete against somebody like who is very big. On the other hand, all of these platforms, Apple, uh, Google Books, uh, Kobo, Kindle, they are all competing. Uh, for the same market. And this is good for indie publishers because they will try to offer better conditions. Uh, also, there is a massive increase in audiobooks. Uh, 
Uh, they are fighting over who's going to be the main audio platform. Uh, so I, I think, yes, I think um, it's, it's good. Uh, trend in digital, especially in the pandemics, they sold many digital books because, of course, you couldn't go to the library. Um, I, I think it's good. I don't think uh, e-books are replacing uh, book books. If you would see our house, you would uh, certainly know this is true. We, I think we'll have to move because we're running out of space for books. Um, and I love reading both books and e-books. Um, and I don't know about the general reading culture in, in the world. I think it may be in some countries is dropping a bit uh, among the younger population because they read other things. But I would like to share a statistics that at least I found very encouraging, inspiring, and of course lucrative for the writers, uh, which is that uh, there was a Yale team, uh, Yale University team uh, that follow like roughly around 3,500 adults over the age of uh, 50 for 12 years. And what they discovered is that people who read books books, so not magazines or, or other things, for 30 minutes a day, lived nearly two years longer than everybody else who read just magazines. So I'm just saying, if you want to live longer, read books. <laughs> good, good, good. So, but they say that, for example, the children of the boomers already consumes almost 80% of their news digitally for free. So this situation that it's available for free, that writers will have to kind of work with the digital era and try to publish for free. This is also a little bit detailed that I've been reading, but uh, I think it's gonna get innovative. Like everything gets innovative. Like they were thinking that audio video games, that they're gonna kill the cinema, that everybody's gonna stay home, but then Netflix came. So I think life is like this. Exactly. Circle uh, around innovation. So everything will adapt to, to, to the moment, no? Exactly. And I think you're, you're right to notice that there's a lot of free content uh, up there. Uh, I think people today are still willing to pay for good quality content. This does not mean they will stop consuming free content. I also read uh, news that I get for free, but I also um, subscribe to news I pay for. And I will take time to read because I know it's well researched. Um, so I think in this sense, um, there is, you know, digital, we don't have to fear digital. And from what I've heard, many authors who are independent or self-published or with the small um, publishers, they give one of their books for free. And usually this is the first book in a series, or they give short stories for free. Uh, also, I give a short story to all my subscribers to the newsletter because I want them to see first to, you know, have, as you say, uh, to um, taste the cake before they buy it. Uh, and authors who give one of their books for free, this returns in, in really a big amount of money for them because somebody who reads your book for free and likes it will buy other books. And if they don't like it, you know, they did not lose anything. You, you can only gain. So I think it's like a small investment that you need to make into every business, but I, you know, um, that can bring back return on investment. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But also, uh, I've seen that eh, you shared with me that uh, the data that 30% of the world read more due to coronavirus. So people, they go back to reading. Eh? They have time now to, yeah. to, to concentrate on reading. Eh? I think uh, the reading changed a lot also because you, before internet, Netflix and all of that, people were reading um, along the, I guess, uh, fireplace in the evening and had quite some time to read. And you will notice books written in that time are also much more rich in description. The chapters are longer. But today, when you read, when you travel from work to uh, uh, home or something, the chapters got shorter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, another data, they say that at least one translation of a Slovene book gets published per week in Slovenia. And the translation uh, rights for books written in Slovenia are quite often sold to a publisher abroad. So Petra, just if you can jump in in this situation, uh, publishers abroad, how much do you know, maybe data, how much is selling other authors to, to abroad, Slovenian authors, do you have any details about this? 
I have no idea, Matai. Yeah. But may I comment something? Yes. Carmen, I hope so much that uh, the paper books will stay forever. And I believe that for, let's imagine this, you have a book, you can smell it, you can touch it, you, you can hold it, you, you can scribe it, everything, you can do that on a computer. So I, I really believe that paper books will stay. It's changing technology all the time, but, but if you look at the history, the books are always here. So, but they are different, as you said, Carmen. Yeah, today we don't have long chapters, and so you have you have to adapt to this this time. But books will stay. Come on, when you have uh, difficult times, when you're depressive, when you don't know what to do, when you don't have answers, when you don't have no one to go to, what do you do? You take a book. So we need. I I hope we always will be uh, in the paper books. I hope so too. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> you, see, you mentioned, uh, Petra, that you never listen to advices and statistics. That seems that this kind of limits you and uh, like work according to feeling uh, that you do everything with raw math that comes from the market based on that, man. That you decide how to adapt your publishing house and books accordingly. A concept, man, that you said, or the, or the crowd goes, the opportunity is on the other side. If everyone goes online, you will go even further into print books. Well, you don't have to be really smart to understand that they all go one direction. Okay, if you go there, there's nothing left. As you said, Carmen, it's no space there. So the opportunity is somewhere else. Just find it, try it, something like that. When you say, of course, I, I do listen to advices from people I, I really admire, but... Okay. I don't, um, but I don't go to those, um, how to say it, for example, in Slovenia, all the publishing houses have the community to talk about it, where to go, what are the trends. I um, intentionally don't go there because I don't want to limit myself to say, if I, start, if I start to believe that paper books are not okay, my paper books won't sell. I want to believe otherwise. And I will fake it if I need to, but I will be, believe otherwise. But, um, but I, I think that also strong point of being entrepreneur is that I do um, measure a lot of statistic. You know, it's the statistic that counts that will tell you this is, that's good right now in this market and that's not. It's not the feeling, it's not just the feeling, it's also the feeling with that just the feeling, I think that this will be good. I think, no, there's a math behind it. There's a statistic, just you will see what's going on in the market. Just watch, just observe, and then find this opportunity and put it there. I, but I do believe we don't have the sexy job, Carmen, to be honest. If, you, if we ask young people, being a writer, it's not a sexy job. It's totally not sexy. Though. It's not like making a beer or you live in a, in a town with a beer. That's sexy, but not as an art. But still, I think it's a good, um, good branja. Good. Yeah. How, how to say it's branja a, in English? It's a good branch of industry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because well, we we do read books and we will be writing we will be reading books um yeah different than in the history but it will be there i think uh, the word sexy is that you are uh, sending message to the world through your words and influencing and, and challenging people so this is very sexy actually it's it's a, it's a intellectual thing you know so but Petra, uh, where are you publishing? Which are uh, published houses uh, where, with who you collaborate mostly? No, I, uh, I'm a self-publisher. No, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. I, no, actually, no problem. The question went to Carmen, I'm so sorry. Carmen, yeah, yeah, I have a question for you, sorry, Petra. Carmen. Carmen. Uh, where will I publish? Yes, yes. Uh, so I, 
at the moment, I, it's like this, I've decided to self-publish my next book, which is this short story collection. Uh, for the rest, I have, I think, already ideas for my next four to five books um, planned out. And once those are written, which might take uh, some time, so with each book, I will offer it to uh, agents as well as publishers but I want to find the right uh, publishing house for me. So I don't think I will go very wide. I have a handful of uh, select, selected auth, um, agents and publishers that I would offer it to, uh, but otherwise I will just continue self-publishing because I find this actually quite exciting. Uh, so yeah, for now, for now, I cannot give you an answer in terms of which specific house I will pitch to, but I do have a plan, uh, and I do also have a plan, uh, you know, to go my own way at the same time. So it's yeah. going to be both. But they, they come globally, they come from different parts of... Yeah, or so I'm looking into UK and US market because okay. of the language. Uh, I will, my, the collection that I'm publishing now, because I'm in, of course, because I'm in Brazil, and uh, as everybody who lives in Brazil knows, English is not very common. I will, uh, I already have a translator. I will have it translated to Portuguese. Um, so it will come out probably a bit later after the English one. Um, I am slowly looking into translations, slowly because I also need to write books, but uh, I will, I think, also try other markets. For now, it's just US and UK, mostly UK, but I will look also into the US. Nice, nice. I just want to comment uh, on a comment that um, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Jurek Knez just said here on the chat box. For me, writers are the cornerstone of a culture, of a nation. It is something which will stay forever. Thank you for writing great books. And I totally agree. It's sexy. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, it's definitely a business potential and it's time for more authors to make a living from it. And entrepreneurship is a good way forward, right? So hopefully you can, um, you can influence with your work and uh, other people. So I think it's, it's a very good um, environment where you are. And if you can influence more with your work and the things you do, I hope it goes forward. And with us is also Mr. Dr. Shale, uh, our team leader of the organization. So I will pass the word to him if he wants to comment. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Matea, for organizing this meetings. Uh, congratulations, this is becoming the regular activities of our Slovenian Global Business Network. Well, I identify myself very much with the two ladies because I started to be in publishing business with the age of 12 years when I published my first newspaper, uh, class newspaper in Itzeska Gymnasia and later on. So uh, I know how to, how, hard, how to hard is make something, write something, and how to art is to sell it to the public, the public understand. We learn, I learned a lot with, uh, 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 it was really a uh, class uh, uh, that you given. I want to enjoy also this opportunity to thanks very much to Carmen. Uh, I heard that you are leaving Brazil, so it will be not any more neighbors uh, in some way, but we'll be not close, but thank you very much for all your help, especially to enrich uh, uh, the content of our activities in Slovenian Global Business Network. You bring us this uh, gender activities, let's say in some way, you insist on all the initial statement that we put uh, Slovenian Podietnik in Podietnica, which will three founders, Dr. Kralic, uh, my, uh, and uh, Ambassador Gosner and me, we, 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 did, we miss it. And so I'm very thankful for this. Uh, uh, regarding the Slovenian, uh, Slovenian market and so, I will provoke all of you 
especially both of you, you 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 have no reason to claim anything wrong with publishing business in Slovenia with so on, because now you have Mr. Rupel who will in charge of Slovenian agency for books. That is very few nations and countries around the world who, who make such kind of choice. So take it easy, please. <laughs> take it easy. And so uh, look, uh, I, uh, we used to say that the, we Jews are the nation of books, nah? uh, povodu livru. But I think that this is very valid for Slovenians. Nah? Even our first book was published by the way, our first uh, uh, first uh, Slovenian text, Brzezinski Spomeniki, was published at the same time as uh, the first book, Vasconcelos document, Documents, in Portuguese language, thousand years ago. And our first book was published five, over 550 years ago. And then in the 50 years, from 1550, for to 16, nine, uh, 16 uh, uh, they were published over 50 books. From, nine, nine, uh, from 16, nine, uh, 1,600 to 1,750, uh, 1, but public, published only another 50 books. But later on, uh, with, uh, in the uh, 19th century, the Slovenian, we start to publish the book in Slovenian. We have uh, uh, publishing books and uh, uh, publishing houses, which, uh, which really uh, help us very much in, let's say, in, in enlighten and support. But uh, as uh, I think that uh, Carmen mentioned, uh, especially not so only in your generation, but in my generation, we learn really in my book, in, 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 uh, in the schools that uh, uh, to be a writer has to be everything you mentioned besides to be drunken. Huh? You didn't mention this, but uh, as I remember yes. a lot of Slovenian. And by the way, uh, I'm I'm collecting the original edition of the one uh, uh, German speaking German speaking writer Josef Roth, uh, which uh, he was born in Galicia and uh, that uh, died in in Paris. She she was uh, uh, later on she 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 died because she he had uh, he had uh, cirrhosis. Uh, she. So this is this was in some in some time, but this is a very hard profession, by the way, very hard job to do. Uh, I'm thankful of both of you that you are doing this. Uh, as uh, Dr. Kness mentioned, the, this is the cornerstone of our culture. Uh, I think that uh, that is uh, for me personally. Uh, uh, we have another Slovenian uh, lady writer who is uh, writing in French, uh, Brina Svit. I don't know if you, she's living in France and she, she's uh, publishing in France, I think the three or four books. I think you are, you are not less Slovenian and your Slovenian soul and heart is less present because you are writing in 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 uh, in uh, foreign language, uh, I think that if you have an opportunity to re to read, uh, I think the Carmen sometimes read my articles in Brazilian newspaper. Uh, you can feel it in all of them, my roots, uh, from when I came, uh, my let's say my shtetl, my shintur in. I, even I'm thinking and writing in Portuguese. So will, you will be Slovene. Right? And you are in some way translating this. So thank you very much. Right? And uh, hope to meet you again. And uh, in the next month, in another meeting. Right? And uh, what is uh, uh, especially to both of you uh, that Besides that, we are very proud of both of you, what you are doing. 
at what you have done and you realize, but don't forget that one quarter of Slovenian population is living abroad. Right? And that we tried to use the Slovenian Global Business Network, put together more these Slovenes, uh, which is not living only in Italy, in uh, Hungary, in Croatia, or in, in, in Austria, but all around the world. Right? And this is in any language, especially, it's a big market in the certain fourth and Z generation for us. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I have to go now, I have a lesson, I have a class in Hebrew, so I have to stop to talk anyway. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Shalo. Do you have any comments before he leaves, Petra and Karin? I mean, of course, I would I would agree. So I'm still one year in Brazil. I think we we can still have time to catch up once we're vaccinated and all of this. Uh, I would just maybe mention because I really um, strongly agree with the fact that uh, Slovenia, you know, Slovenian language is so in a way fra fragile because it's a small country. It's changing. It's changing also due to influences of other languages, uh, especially English. So I think now more than ever, um, I hope also that uh, uh, Slovenian um, governments will have the foresight to invest into Slovenian writing, because uh, if the writers cannot uh, comfortably live from, and if it's still going to be a stereotype that this is something you do on the side, on top of your job, then I think Slovenian culture will suffer. And with for me, the culture is the heart of a nation. Um, is it, we need to we need to invest in it, and if anything, the pandemic has shown when everything else was taken away, you know, uh, economy, business, everything was taken away, everything was standing still. We only had culture. Here in Sao Paulo, we didn't even have the parks, they opened, they closed everything. So the only thing you could uh, consume to kind of sort of say soothe yourself was uh, either books or you watch something on the TV, which is again culture. These are all stories. And I think it's only fair that people who create these stories are compensated in a way that they don't have to, you know, have three jobs to survive. Uh, I think this is a small request and I think the culture matters and the governments that are going to realize and invest in it are those you know who are going to prosper if i may add something mr uh, chalet yes I, one quarter of slovenian people are abroad it's so touching sometimes when you travel to see slovenians all around the world that are so proud or on, on their roots and they so say so proud that i'm from slovenia you know the the nice country and it's really touching. Sometimes I miss that here in Slovenia from people that are always in Slovenia. So please, yeah, do that more. Thank you, Mateja. Thank you, Mr. Stefan. And it's really nice to see that, that we still, we, we are all around the world, but we're still kind of connected and we can feel that that's our home in a way. So thank you for all this. Thank you. Well, I just want to conclude myself by said, you know, uh, Mattia Chop, you probably remember him is from the school. He uh, didn't say what he said. I will translate what he said for the nowadays, for today. Toliko, koliko jeziko znaš, toliko žena veljaš. You have to translate it for Miss Vanda now. <laughs> so it's updated. <laughs> No. I cannot ever translate this. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we have uh, with us Amalia Yelenviksha, uh, very special. Ooh, she's still there. She's also author. Yes, I, I, so, I am with you. <laughs> you're with us. Okay, so we we want to just hear some maybe comments from your part uh, as being an author and a writer. I'm just a little tiny author and uh, and writer. I I used to be a journalist on national TV. Uh, but I just would like to greet you and thanks to both of authors. We know you somehow, uh, and I'm very grateful to uh, was able and invited to follow you, uh, all of you uh, as well. You 
uh, Matea, we are missing you in Ljubljana. And uh, let's say it was really an event. I would love to see more people to, in Slovenia especially, uh, you were talking about so many uh, basic basics of of uh, publishing and writing. So uh, just čestitam uh, vam and see you next time again. Thank you. But you also wrote a book recently, right? Uh, okay, it, it is such a, uh, uh, let's say, a historical love story about the last, uh, last, uh, um, how to say in English, oh. Count uh, Florentine from uh, uh, Castle Otocet. It was it. Uh, but somehow I am more in video uh, production in my thoughts and dreams than, than to be a writer. And I just adore two of you, uh, uh, Carmen and Petra. Uh, it is amazing what you are writing. Thank you, that's very kind. So I'm gonna leave a little five more minutes for any questions, any comments before you all leave. Uh, the stage is yours. If anyone, if I may wants. add, uh, Mrs. Amar, uh, how is it, Amalia? If uh, if I may add, we are um, doing a lot to put this writing into schools. For example, we are working in the schools when um, third graders are making their first small book. They do all, yes. all the stuff they have to do to make a book. So we're really trying to, to show uh, young people that writing is cool, is sexy. You can help uh, yourself by it. You can help others and how to make you know, nice sentences. So yeah, we're trying to do that. Yes, and uh, uh, let's say you, you are doing uh, so well, you know. It is so important that uh, there, is, there are thoughts, our thoughts, and especially you, you are younger generation than me. I am retired for three years now. But uh, somehow uh, to keep in mind that, uh, that we are somehow obliged, especially us, we were reading a lot. We were listening to the radio plays uh, we were listening, uh, it would be interesting for Carmen, the, uh, it was the technical magazine, it was about the, the sky, about the astronauts and all of, all of that. And I have sometimes feeling I would like to do more to, to involve young people to, to read more. But somehow you were explaining, they are young people, they are reading. Actually, you know, sometimes they, they surprise us that they do read. They just want different li literature that they're getting from, you know, from must in school, but they are reading. For example, we, we even made the book that uh, school, we asked them, what kind of book would you read? And they said, you know, more colors, more like, you know, something. And I said, okay, show me, what kind of book would you read? And we made the book. It's like a, a not a telephone, but tablet. 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 Yeah. Perfect. tablet. Perfect. And you open Perfect. it and it's with pictures. It's like from Instagram. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it's like it's Instagram photos. Okay. So they want to read. We just need to listen to them. What do you like? Let's make books for them as well, because they are different than, than also from me. I, I have no idea what TikTok is, so I'm old for them. <laughs> we need to listen to them, ask them. Yes, it is interesting. I, ha I had a feeling uh, we were uh, not spoiling, but we were destroying the mind of younger generation when they were in high schools. It was the reading just for to pass the exam or matura or to graduate. It was 
the only uh, only goal just passed the school and there were some show uh, they shortened all uh, books uh, important for slovenian culture and it was all what the young generation was reading maybe you both are uh, as young as i would imagine you 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 went through the same period as our daughter and yeah. it was it it was so sad mm. I, I have to say that this pandemic made me feel young because I have not yet been vaccinated. Uh, <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I remember I loved reading as a child. I spent most of my childhood in the library, would read anything I could, and then just moved on from there. But in school, I never got the feeling that uh, reading was a pleasure. It was more like something to analyze and dissect. And mostly they were telling us what the story was about. And this is not necessarily how I. I understood the story. So I think a lot of the, whether people read yes. or not depends on what kind of culture uh, is presented to them in school. Because for me, a book is like a magic door that opens and you disappear and then you uh, you are in this world, you forget that you're reading, you're with other people, you see interesting things. It's not something that I necessarily want to, you know, structureize, analyze as a reader, as a writer, sure, but as a reader, I just want to get lost. And I think once we can bring this back into schools, I mean, people will always love good stories because our brains are wired for stories when people tell stories we forget everything else we focus and we listen especially if it's a good story so i think we need to find a way back to what these what books are about which is about stories and when kids will uh, you know grow up with stories they will read i don't think reading is in any danger uh, if we you know go back to the pleasure Yes, if I may say, I will just say what I am missing. I spent four years in Dublin and there, there were the walks to the Sandy Mount Beach and there were Sunday, uh, Sundays or um, Saturdays. They were young people sitting, uh, let's say, uh, behind the windows, no curtains, always open, the small houses, the bigger houses, and they were young people sitting and reading. Uh, it was for me something I'm really missing in Slovenia and thinking what went wrong from our generation. We all were reading, but still nowadays the, the um, parents, they do all to, to, to keep uh, or to learn, uh, to teach uh, uh, children how to be, stick to books. Uh, the protocol of the evening and all of that, but somehow um, a generation or two, they, they were lo lost uh, to get this uh, habit to read more or to like it or to love it or to, to say it is sexy. Sexy. Thank you. Sexy. Thank you. I, I was talking <laughs> as well too much, Matea. Thank you no, so no, much. No. Yeah, I, yes. I was I would love just, I'm going to share with everybody because I think you're a very important uh, writer. I, I, you're very humble. You don't want to talk about much here because today <laughs> is about Carmen and Petra. But I just want to share here a link that you know, that Thank you, you. Get to know a little bit um, uh, Amalia Levin as a writer. Thank you, and greetings to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. It was a nice surprise. Um, I would like to just uh, say a little, would like to send our special thanks to our sponsors, uh, the government's office for Slovenes Abroad and Slovenian Visit Chamber of Commerce. And uh, if anyone else has any comments, would like to integrate a little bit more with our two, three writers, please, the stage is yours. Also, if I may add, if anybody wants, gets an idea after, I mean, just on my website, you have my email. I'm sure Petra also is happy to uh, connect to readers. I'm always happy to, you know, answer questions or connect afterward. I already uh, sent it uh, on the beginning of our chat, uh, all the, all the uh, www dots, <laughs> all the contacts. So would like to say thank you for joining us again and for participating, uh, stay well. And we will meet again on our next event in June for more guests coming as well.
Thank you, Matei. And thank you all for thank coming. You. That's a part how you support also writing and reading. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paula. It's, 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 such a, it's such a great thing to see people from all over the world, from Boston, uh, Slovenia, from everywhere today. This is amazing to see this, how everybody came together from Europe, Brazil. It's amazing. This is something that I love to do. And even my cat, even my cat is awake, which is not very often. <laughs> what to say? Final goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Ah, we forgot to do cheers. Oh my God, we to celebrate. <laughs> we forgot to. Chin chin, uh, already, Gabrielle already left. No problem. Bye.